Hey there, everyone. This is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. In this video, I'm going to be recreating the beat we hear in Rema's Calm Down featuring Selena Gomez. And I'm going to share some music production tips and techniques along the way. Be sure to watch the whole video. Got a special gift for you as well. So let's go ahead and dive in and listen to the finished result. Now, I know what you might be thinking. I mean, dude, this is a pretty simple Afrobeat type vibe. I mean, what are we gonna learn from this? There's a lot of little nuances, specifically with sound selection and some of the drum programming um, and creating a little bit of the texture with the guitar that we hear that make this go a long way. But even besides that, I wanna talk about the pitfalls of overproducing. And I know something as simple as this really does give more space and more spotlight over to uh, Rema and Selena Gomez to really just do their thing. And oftentimes we find ourselves in the trap of overproducing when we assume that we just can't allow the one or two elements that we have to be it. And a good indicator for me personally as to know when I have enough elements and to stop overproducing is that when I've come across the main ingredients of my music production, it could, be, it could just be drums, it could be drums and a bass track, and that those two alone could be it. If that inspires me to start coming up with a melody idea or just coming up with a bigger picture, then I know that I've got the main ingredients in place and now it's all about how I go about cooking those main ingredients, right? So it just goes about, okay, if, if this drum groove is really you know, slamming and it's causing me to be inspired, I might even just use my mouth to just put some, uh, some crazy melodic phrase down. That's what I'm saying, it's, it's what is what is igniting the inspiration for the next step and not just putting things for the sake of technically putting things because some other YouTube video said, layer it to death. So that's a big mindset that we want to carry into, uh, you know, simple productions. And, uh, and sometimes the simple ones are actually really one of the harder ones to do because it comes down to all the small, the small details that make it you know, that make or break the whole thing. So I want to start off with the actual groove. Let me zoom in here and let's listen to the drum groove alone. Now there's a couple of things happening here. As you can see, the pattern is pretty straightforward, nothing crazy, but in this Afrobeat pattern, we have the kick really just setting the pace, right? Almost treating it as our click or as our metronome. That's just giving us the pulse. But yet the actual rhythm in the pocket comes from the small rim knock here. And then the accent, this push, uh, pull and push and pull response here is between the short rim knock and this long bottom heavy uh, percussion, which is like a you know conga. So now with those two, also with frequency wise, we have a small higher frequency, uh, short, really short percussion hit, and a longer lower frequency. Uh, percussion. So there is that nice contrast, even within the sound selection itself, that plays a big part into the groove as well. And then I'm strategically using another type of sound, layering it to accent a certain down or a certain subdivision. So I'm not layering it, uh, this sound for the sake of creating texture. I'm doing it just so that one sound stands out in a certain rhythmic moment of the groove and that's how we're accenting that and then we also have a uh, hi-hat over here accenting a certain section of the, the overall groove. so straightforward so a lot of emphasis then goes into the sound selection and, and tweaking the sounds it goes a long way so for instance we have this uh this rim knock here but you might see that I'm having it really, really cut down on the length by using the fade out here. So just by fading out the sample, um, I'm not, and here's the difference. I can just cut the sample really short, but it's just, um, it then now becomes too abrupt. So if I undo that and I use the fade out fit function instead, 
you still get a little bit of the tail. It doesn't abrupt, but it cuts. It still shortens that. It's the same equivalent as if we were in a classic mode here and bringing the sustain down of this sample. So I actually prefer tweaking in classic mode because I have a little bit more control of uh, tweaking the decay and the sustain of the sample to really give it a, so that the attack doesn't get um, sacrificed or compromised when I'm tweaking it and it doesn't feel as abrupt and it, it feels a little bit more natural this way. So as I tweak this, shorten it, um, that, that captures that nice short rim knock that I'm looking for. Then for the accent note that we're using, here, I'm actually in the controls, making sure that I'm, I'm spreading it a lot wider. So even in stereo imaging, the accent will stand out and gives the sense of, hmm, every, whenever that accent note hits, it feels a little bit wider. And they're quite similar in texture or in type of sound. So one way you can actually, when layering sounds together, is give a little bit more texture of one of the layers is by pitching up or down. So I might want to pitch this up two semitones. And the lower I go in semitones, the more noticeable that sound's going to be. Why? Because the longer that sample is going to take to finish playing. Now, before I move on to processing the drums, I want to actually highlight another cool um, way to kind of chop up a loop and use some of the elements in that loop in a drum rack as well. So here I have a percussion loop. That have a lot of cool elements that I actually might wanna use um, with this Afrobeat type of rhythm. So I'm gonna double click this and I will go through and just maybe double click each of the sounds. I'll create a warp marker. I like this sound here. And we'll keep it like that. And what I'll do is I'll actually just bring this to one bar because I'm just focusing on the sounds rather than the actual loop length. Then I'm going to right click and choose to slice to new MIDI track. And I'm going to make sure that I choose the warp marker option because then what it will do is it'll create the individual slices in a drum rack independently just on the warp markers that I created. So if I hit OK, then this creates another MIDI track right underneath it with, so now I can remove that and I have all the slices individually here. So we can double click and now by default, it's set to loop each of these slices. So I'll just turn the loop length all the way down and that's going to deactivate that. So what's great is I like that chopped sample I might actually want to just use that over here in my main uh, drum rack beat. So what I'll do is I can just click, drag and drop that over to this drum rack, place it right here in G2, and then AB, and then AB, there's a, there's a slice that we had right there. All right, let me go back here. Both work fine. The fr this one we just got from the slice. It's a bit lighter because, uh, well, it's a higher pitched sound. And this just seems, a, at a lower pitch, seems a little bit more up front. So I might go with slice one. And I'll come in here. And doing what we did before, I'll lower the sustain a little bit. There you go. So let's go ahead and do some processing. Now the drum samples sound fine, and I've done a little bit of blending, just a little balance here. I've tucked the kick away a little bit. Um, maybe the, the rim knock is going to be the main driving of the groove here. I'm, I'm making sure that the accent, the low conga is a, a bit higher and the kick is just really kind of there as just to give pulse. 
right? So once I get my blend in there with the drums, let's add some compression to kind of just glue these together. But what I'm going to do here is maybe start with trying some parallel compression, meaning that I'm going to have both the dry signal and the compressed signal uh, playing simultaneously. So let's do exact, you know, crazy exaggerated compression here. Okay. Now, once I get that nice exaggerated compression and I get the settings that I like them, such as like the ratio of seven to one and just moving the attack probably in the middle, I'm going to dial the dry and wet knob. So there's a little bit more presence there with the uh, parallel compression. So I like that. I like that. I didn't want to remove the dynamics. I didn't want, I didn't need to necessarily add more punch to the drums. I just wanted to actually have a little bit more um, overall presence. And I could do that with some parallel compression. And we'll add some drum bus here to give some saturation and the transit designer. So let's take these two off for a second. Now moving on to the guitar, um, to the best of my known ability, I think it's an acoustic guitar, or at least it feels like it. But I did go back and forth between a virtual um, electric guitar and a virtual acoustic. So I stuck with the acoustic, and I'm using the pick nylon from Native Instruments here. So let's take a listen to that. Like to consider to really help uh, bring a little bit more nuance to this is the sustain pedal. If I have a, I have a sustain pedal connected to my MIDI keyboard, and that actually changes the articulation of the way the strings are played. So if you don't have one or you do have a sustain pedal, you can still write in or draw in the sustain pedal here. I can go to my envelope mode, find MIDI controller control, and look for sustain pedal and start using this up and down here. So then I will go ahead and draw some of these parts in. And that's going to help create some more legato between one note to the next. So I'll go ahead and remove that so you can hear the difference. You see how they're too chopped up and, and that right there leads it to really feeling like a fake guitar. So adding the sustain pedal will give a little bit more of that new. I actually wanna change the velocity here. that down and if I can get these notes overlap and increase that maybe we can get like a fret noise to happen here that all those little things those details really help in creating some more of the organic elements in this guitar that's a little bit ahead so we'll just move that over slightly like this now another thing I did too was um, this is a whole octave higher so uh, originally, I played it at this octave. So once, because just my hand just couldn't go to that lower E, once I played it there, I then brought it up, that E a whole octave lower by just hitting shift and up and down and the arrow key. And that gives me that performance there. I'm going to add a bit of chorus here. Well, actually, let me go back and I'll play you. So this is just a nylon. I'll mute that. And I went back and forth between the electric. It, it was a deeper tone, which was okay. But then I ended up staying with the nylon. had had a much more presence to it. A little bit of chorus. An EQ. Just doing my best to EQ in it in light of the reference. As I listen to the actual original song and the two tracks, as I go back and forth, I start adjusting this EQ to have it fit that same type of tone. Now, 
Now I wanted to filter this out. So I immediately went to a auto filter, but then I also realized I wanted to actually add a little bit of digital distortion or, or kind of degrade the quality of the sound. So I can do both with Redux. Redux has an onboard filter here. So I'm doing that. I put it on post. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sidechain, and this is going to help create a little bit of that pulse action. So I'm using the drum rack, and I'm choosing the kick drum here. I'm setting it to pre, and the kick drum, every time it plays, it's going to cause the guitar to duck. So let's put that with the drums. Now for the bass, we have a simple two oscillator synth that I'm using here in Ableton Live. It's called the Wavetable. And I have oscillator one set to a square wave and oscillator two set to a triangle wave to give us the sound that we're looking for. Now what I have is the, free, the filter frequency here is going to get mapped, so we'll go to my matrix, to the envelope two. So I'm gonna click that, map that to envelope two, Sending a little bit of that, not too much, because the more you send to that, the more impact envelope two has on the cutoff. So right there is a good, a good sweet spot into envelope two and really just lowering down the sustain and bringing down the decay to the setting here. Now, once I bring the cutoff down, I want to make sure that oscillator two is a whole octave lower. and making sure that I switch the unison on to classic. I want to also switch it from polyphonic to monophonic here and just give a little bit of width here by increasing the amount. I'm also giving a little bit of filter drive here and shaping the overall tone with an EQ. And next we have that cool little lead that we hear as a call and response in the choral section. For this, I decided to just use a simple uh, triangle wave. So both oscillators are set to a triangle wave here. And we got oscillator two a whole octave higher and just lowering the cutoff a little bit. And a reverb directly onto that sound. I just want to take the time to reinstate the importance of, you know, not falling into the trap of overproducing. It necessarily isn't about how many sounds you have. It's about the quality and what sounds you have in your music production. You'd be surprised. Maybe just even a drum loop that just sounds amazing could inspire you to just put a whole vocal, a whole 16 bar verse down. And so it really, there is no right or wrong way or how many things you should have in your track. It's just all about what is inspiring you to take that next step forward to getting that track across the finish line. And that's really at the very important thing. Because oftentimes you can hear this, you can hear a, a song like this and on the radio, and it's like, man, that's just a simple beat. But as you hear the whole thing, the whole big picture, where you have the artist really delivering well, and Rema just does an amazing thing, the, the cadence, the flow, and, and also when Selena's featured on this, then that's the big you know, that's the big picture here. And you kind of st step away and be like, oh yeah, it makes sense. And it also, what it does is it really focuses more attention on the delivery of the performer rather than just the instrumentation. You can, gotta, you can be a little bit more forgiving on what's going on there. So I think that's a very important aspect and principle to keep in mind. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. And if it has, I'm super glad that you are here and you're watching. And as my gift to you for watching and taking the time to watch this video, I love to send you a VST plugin that I have created called Orbit. Now this plugin 
is a great way to add some amazing atmosphere and mood into your tracks. Uh, it's very simple, straightforward. You have planet A and planet B. These are your two modules. So these are your two layers of sound. And you can go ahead and mix between one or the other. You have your amp, the decay, sustain, and release. Your amp envelope here, a little bit of chorus and space to give some dimension and depth, and a filter, and your volume. So if you'd like to download Orbit, this VST plugin, absolutely free, just click the link below in the description box or visit beatacademy.com slash Orbit to access this plugin today. I'd love to send it directly into your inbox so that you can download this plugin and use it in your projects as soon as you can. Well, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with upcoming videos and content that I'll be sharing on this channel. And if you're looking for professional guidance and helping you move forward with your music production, then visit beatacademy.com for more details and to find out how I can help you do exactly that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.